In this video we're going to take a look at P-Search. P-Search is one of the initiators. Um, this allows us to search based on a particle's position or a general location. Um, and we can search among a particular group and find out information about that group. Um, we can look within a certain radius uh, and specify whether we want to use subtree, um, the particle group, and any of his children. Uh, let's go ahead and just take a quick look. We'll use a very simple example right now. We've got a red particle already out here. I'm going to go ahead and use that red particle, connect him to the P-search as particle input, and we're going to search among the blue particles. We don't really need subtree. There is no subtree for blue. And we'll go ahead and adjust that radius. Uh, we don't really see any results right now. We're not doing anything with any of the outputs that we get. Let's go ahead and just use a standard. This is one we used previously. Um, we can take all the found particle IDs and make them part of the green group. And so as we adjust this radius, you can see that um, red is finding um, all of these particles, all these blue particles within this radius, and he's going to go ahead and take all those particles that he finds and send them out into the uh, into the green group there. Um, if we go ahead and modify this really quickly, we can maybe make a, some more red particles. Let's come out here and we'll give birth to another red particle there. And we'll actually come out in time and create another one over here at frame 39. Uh, so we can see um, every red particle, every red particle does this search and searches within this radius, searches among the blue particles, and optionally a subtree. And any particle IDs that it finds, it's going to go ahead and take those and assigns them to a new group, the green group. So those blue particles become green. And once these, this one at 39 turns on, boom, it immediately finds those. Um, there's some other th interesting things we can do. We can, let's actually come back to our born, take this, we will remove all of them and just born one. Let's put him there. Um, we can dynamically modify this p-search parameter. We could take the particle's age and send that out into the radius. So as this red particle, or each and every red particle, as they get older, uh, their search radius will grow larger. So he starts off uh, very young, very limited radius, but then it grows over time until he dies. Uh, let's come back into our particle draw and we'll set their lifespan to nice and high. So we'll see it just goes ahead and spreads and spreads until they're all within the green group. Um, there's some other things we can do with the outputs. Let's go ahead and turn off oops, let's turn off this age. We'll hold shift and click that output to disconnect it. And instead of sending them, I'll just go ahead and leave them in that green group for right now. Um, we can take any of these outputs and do interesting things with it. Um, let's go ahead and for now we're just going to modify the size. We're going to modify the red particle size based on how many he finds. What we're going to do is take the, the found count. How many particles does he find? And we're going to control the red particle size based on how many blue particles he finds. Um, you can see here it looks like quite a large number. He's pretty big. Uh, let's go ahead and right click to write to debug log and we'll take a look at the number that we've got. Um, you see right here it says found count zero. It's because we're now on frame one and um, all of these blue particles have been changed into green particles so he doesn't actually find any. Uh, when we go back to zero we'll see this count get updated. Okay so he gets 43. So his the particles, red particle size is now 43. That's awfully big. Um, but this is just one way that we can take any of these outputs and drive further operations in TP. Um, let's go ahead and do this. This will be a little ludicrous, but we will turn off that. Let's say found indexes. Um, it should probably be indices, but whatever. So the found indexes, these are going to show us um, it doesn't actually show the actual particle IDs. What it shows us is what their index of being found is. Like 0 is the first particle that it found, 1 is the second particle that it found, etc. So um, it's their found order, basically. Um, that can be used in conjunction with a memory operator. You can store in memory um, 
based on his found index, uh, where he should be in the memory depth. Uh, we'll go ahead and disable that. Let's take a look at something else like the, um, uh, the found PIDs. Let's go ahead and remove that group assignment. Um, found density. Found density is a good one. Let me go ahead and scrub. Let's actually expose that output. Um, you can see here our found density within this radius, uh, within 17 something, the found density is going to be 2.50665. What this means is it is the total count divided by the radius. So let's take a look at what our count is. Let's go ahead and write this to debug. And remember for debug to use any to expose anything it has to be used so we'll pipe that into size variation which isn't going to really matter a whole lot for us and we can see that our found density is 2.5 and our found count is 43 so if we take our count 43 and divide it by our radius we're going to get 2.5 and change so 43 divided by 17.154 and there it is Okay, so that's found count, found density. Um, something else we can do, one, another one of these outputs. So let's turn off debug. Uh, we want to use generator position born. Let's clear all the debug info. We can output the found average position for all the particles that it finds. Now we'll, do a f we'll pipe that into position born, born a green particle, just one position shot, and with a zero speed. And you can see it's pretty much centered right around that red particle, which is what we would expect. This red particle is searching a radius, and so that position is going to be averaged, and it's right around in there, so it's not going to be exactly. Um, some other things, we've got like nearest particle ID. We can find the, let's go ahead and get that group back in here. We can return the, uh, the nearest particle to this red particle. And we can make him turn green here. So you can see that's going to be this guy. And this is interesting. Um, here we are at frame 0. At frame 0, this is the nearest particle. And so he's turned green. And now he's no longer going to be searched for. So then what it's going to happen on the next frame or next time sample is it's going to look for the next nearest blue particle, which is going to be this guy. And then the next frame, that guy. So as they get moved out of the blue group, uh, this P search has to find a new blue to be the nearest. And of course, this can also be done with the furthest PID, particle ID. And it's basically going to kind of close in on that red until there's no more to be found.